from schools to offices, everyone everywhere has a strong opinion about climate change. When talking about climate change and CO2 emissions, people blame cars, aeroplanes, petrol, diesel and coal. But they never talk about concrete, one of the top carbon emitters in the world. The construction mafia, the industry that produces and uses concrete. Concrete alone contributes 9% of the world's total human-made CO2 emissions. Then why are climate officials silent about it? Then why this selective silence? We dig deep. Thanks for tuning in. This is Ratna. You are watching Empire Diaries. If climate change is really a worry, the public should be told the truth that the concrete industry is a major culprit behind emissions. From the United Nations to the United States, from governments to journalists, all of them are extremely concerned about climate change and want to punish the culprits. They talk about fossil fuels, carbon footprint, electric cars, and sustainable living. But they don't talk about the elephant in the room, concrete, which everyone pretends they can't see. The world we live in today is controlled by a small bunch of global elites. Their main mission is clear, to urbanize the entire global population. That's a long-term agenda. That's how they want to run our lives. Human civilization is about 12,000 years old. But in the last 200 years, our lives have changed drastically. 56% of the world's 810 crore people now live in the urban areas. For the first time in history, a majority of the world population is living in cities and towns. Only 44% live in villages. One estimate says that there are 10,000 cities in the world now. Half of them didn't exist 40 years ago. They are building cities at lightning speed, forcing villagers to migrate to big cities. Some villages are dying, while some others are fast becoming towns. Towns are fast becoming concrete jungles. India, for example, was historically a civilization of villages. But today, 51 crore Indians live in urban areas, in a total population of 141 crore. It's a stunning transformation into urban living. It won't take long before the majority of the Indians live in big cities. The whole world is rushing towards creating more urban spaces. In this mad rush to urbanize the planet, what is the most valuable material the global elites need? It is concrete. Concrete is the main ingredient that goes into building urban houses and urban structures. Urban buildings of all shapes and sizes, from high-rises to bungalows, from gated communities to business centers, they're all standing tall in big cities thanks to concrete. It's not just residential areas and office buildings. Concrete is also the skeleton of superstructures that are the identity of big cities. I'm talking about bridges, airports, dams, military zones, flyovers, tunnels, shopping malls, railway stations. For everything, concrete is the DNA. And this concrete production is a gigantic culprit of CO2 emissions. Did you know that every year, 3,000 crore tons of concrete is used worldwide. It's a staggering figure. If you look at the per capita production of concrete, you will find that it has increased three times in the last 40 years. With India at the center, the Asia-Pacific region is the world's biggest concrete market. India is witnessing an unprecedented real estate boom, which relies on concrete. One estimate says that India's real estate sector will be worth $1 trillion by the year 2030, $1 trillion is equal to 83 lakh crore rupees. It is unimaginably huge figure. Demand for concrete is escalating. It's now the most wanted building material in the world, more in demand than steel and wood. And it's obvious why concrete will never be scrutinized for causing climate change, because multinational corporations earn big bucks from this. Concrete causes emissions because of its main component, cement. Cement, as you know, is an industry-level binding agent. It is created by burning limestone and clay. When you mix cement with water and other materials like sand and gravel, you get concrete. It is cement that actually emits all the CO2 during its production process. Climate warriors totally ignore this, even though 9% of artificial emissions come from cement. It is clear why climate authorities never target big companies that produce cement and concrete. Like it has been for centuries, the global elites decide what is good 
and what is bad for the public. They decide what is harmful and what is safe. Concrete is part of the same geopolitics. The global elites dream of turning the world into a centrally controlled concrete jungle. For their dream to come true, they need millions of tons of concrete every single day to build new cities and towns. That's why concrete needs to be protected and worshipped at all costs. If the carbon footprint of cement is exposed, the urbanization project will be exposed. The balloon of aspirational urban living will burst. Therefore, concrete must be kept away from public glare. The media is told to focus only on the other culprits of climate change, like fossil fuels, factories, cars that run on oil and coal mines. The carbon footprint of cement buildings and concrete structures should be hushed up. Most importantly, the public must not be told one thing, that villages don't have a carbon footprint compared to energy-hungry cities. Look at some of the biggest cities. They are epicenters of enormous buildings and superstructures. Hong Kong, New York, Dubai, our very own Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Kolkata. Then there is Shanghai, Tokyo, London, Rome, Moscow, Sao Paulo, Singapore. They are celebrated cities, but they contribute to emissions in big way. China, India, Brazil, Russia, and Japan are the five biggest countries in terms of number of cities. One estimate says that there are over 4,000 cities and towns in India. Imagine how much concrete went into building them. Concrete is fueling this urban dystopia. Naturally, it won't be targeted, even if it changes the climate. So is there a solution to the problem of concrete? Is there an alternative to a concrete civilization? The answer is a big yes. There are concrete examples from past and present. The solution lies in two simple words, mud houses. It sounds incredible, even outlandish. If you find the idea of mud houses absurd, it means you have been mislaid. You have been brainwashed into loving concrete urbanization. How can mud houses replace shiny high rises and stylish concrete structures? A perception has been created to make people think that mud brick villages are uncool. They are unsustainable. The cities made of concrete represent development and social prestige. The narrative is manufactured to serve business interests. The human race started building concrete jungles only in the last few centuries. When did industrial concrete enter our lives? Only when a few rich and powerful families took control of town planning. Families that control the manufacturing and construction mafia. Before we had centralization of power, we lived in simple, decentralized villages. We had houses made from mud and soil. For thousands of years, houses of the rich and poor were made of mud and clay. There was no sophisticated multinational construction industry, no crores of profits at stake. In India and South Asia, village life was a backbone for centuries. Even now, outside cities and towns, you will find lakhs of villages. India has about six and a half lakh villages where concrete has no place. More than 350 crore people live in villages globally. A vast number of them have mud houses. Villages don't impact the climate, only the cities do. In India, there are more than 6.5 crore mud houses. The only reason why Indian village life is in misery today is because of the money supply is locked up in the cities. Mud houses are not the problem. They are cheap to build. They are natural. You don't need to spend a fortune. They are built using local engineering techniques. Well-maintained mud houses can outlive cement houses. There are four common types of mud house that is used to build durable houses. Cob, adobe, rammed earth, and wattle and daub. Bottom line is, mud homes represents a life connected to nature and soil, unlike concrete cities. If you go back in time, you will find there were houses made of mud and mud bricks in the Indus Valley civilization. That's about 5,000 years ago. Further back in around 9,000 BCE, Jericho in modern day Palestine had mud brick houses. Mud homes were also in vogue in Jordan Valley, ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia, that is modern day Iraq. Today as well, there are spectacular examples of mud house townships. Check out the mud brick locations in Yemen, Mali, Iran and Morocco. You will be amazed to see them standing tall and surviving time. The biggest example is the old city of Sana in Yemen. It is an extraordinary civilization with houses made of local mud. It has high-rise buildings that stand out. The engineering is intelligent. Ground floors of multi-storied houses are made of stone. Upper floors are made from mud. It's the same story with another place in Yemen. 
the decorated town of Shibam, Madrawat. Shibam is a picturesque place where about 7,000 people live. It is known for its mud brick high-rise buildings. For the elite Western world, which loves concrete, Yemen is a fantasy land. They call Shibam Manhattan of the desert. There are other striking places such as Tabo Monastery in Spiti Valley and Kuchesar Fort in Uttar Pradesh. It was built using mud in the year 996. If you look at Iran, you will be amazed by Arg Ebam. Then there is Villa de Levia in Colombia and the Siwa Oasis in Egypt. Also, there is the Grand Mosque of Jenny in Mali. It is the largest mud building in the world. It was built back in 1905 and firmly stands tall. So these examples prove mud is durable, sustainable, but gives no profit to the multinational corporations. And that's why global elites have decided to protect the concrete industry. They want enormous volumes of concrete in the coming decades and centuries to urbanize human life. People are the lifeblood of human civilization. It is time for them to take a pause. It is time for them to rethink the way they live. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon so that we can notify you whenever we publish a report. Follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Send get updates to 9821045739 for news and views you are not told. Visit our website empirediaries.com for the latest news analysis. Stay informed, stay awake.